that to our next question and answer session. And we have another short question, so I will jump right in. Dear Father Stephen, you mentioned before that we can make many spiritual communions, but if somehow we commit a mortal sin, can we till can we still take spiritual communion? And the answer is absolutely yes. So spiritual communion is especially intended for those who are in a state of mortal sin, for those who are not able to receive Holy Communion. So when I mentioned, you know, can we, that we should make many spiritual communion, it's good for us to do that. So outside of Mass, or let's say because of work you're not able to get to Mass, make many spiritual communions because every time we do, we are expressing our love, our desire for our Eucharistic Lord, and that means we will be receiving an abundance of graces. But spiritual communion is especially intended for those who cannot, absolutely cannot, because they are in a state of mortal sin. So someone in a state of mortal sin should not receive communion because it just adds to their sin. It's a sacrilege for them to receive our Lord. When they receive our Lord in Holy Communion, our Lord cannot remain within them because they are separated from God because of their mortal sin. And so when they force God into themselves, they're really crucifying Christ within themselves, crucifying Christ anew because he cannot remain with them and they receive no grace. So what exactly is a spiritual communion? Well, as I mentioned, it's not being able to receive, but expressing a desire to receive, and in some sense, even imagining yourself being one with God, receiving him into your soul, being nourished by him, being strengthened by him to enable you to have the courage to do the right thing, whether it means going to confession or to cut off bad, sinful habits in, in your life. So there can be many reasons as to why someone doesn't receive. So there might be people in church who, for example, are not Catholic. You know, sometimes spouses come, uh, non-Catholic spouses come with people to church and they don't receive. So we shouldn't judge. Just because someone doesn't receive communion, we can't assume that it's because of mortal sin. So mortal sin, yes, is something that prevents people. And what a lot of people don't realize is that if you are married but not married in church, you cannot receive Holy Communion. In other words, the church does not recognize your marriage as a valid marriage. So you're kind of like just living with someone without being really married to them. So our understanding of marriage, the Catholic understanding, civil society's understanding of marriage, two completely different things. If you get married only civilly, you are equating your marriage with the civil understanding of marriage, which means two men can get married or you can get married one day, file for divorce the next day. So we don't believe that that's what marriage is. We also believe that marriage is a sacrament. And if we turn our back on the sacrament that Christ wants to give us, basically we're saying no to God, which is not a good thing. It's not something that you want to do. So being not married in church is an obstacle to receiving Holy Communion. So it's not, these people aren't committing horrendous sins, but they're just not married in the church. The other thing is that we have to observe one hour fast before Holy Communion. There might be some people, for whatever reason, they eat just before Mass, and let's say it's a weekday Mass, so they can't observe the one hour fast. Even Sunday Mass now, it's shorter. Uh, because we have less music, we don't have the singing of the Gloria, we don't have the offertory collection. So all of these things shorten the Mass. Even my entrance into and out of the church is a little bit shorter. Now another reason why someone, a Catholic, might not be able to receive Holy Communion is, let's say they do believe in the real presence of our Lord in the Eucharist, which is a requirement for being able to receive, but they reject certain other teachings of the Church whether it's dogmatic teachings or moral teachings. So somebody might say, well, I accept everything, but I think using artificial contraceptives is okay. Well, then you should not receive communion because you're not really in communion with the church. So there's five things that are required for a person to be able to receive Holy Communion. They have to be baptized and they have to be a Catholic. So ideally a baptized Catholic. They have to have reached, reached the age of reason and to know and understand and believe in our Lord's true presence in the Eucharist. They need to be in a state of grace, so not in a state of mortal sin, and they need to accept everything 
that the church teaches. In other words, they have to be in full communion with the Catholic Church. If they are not in full communion, they cannot and should not receive Holy Communion. It would be sinful for them to do that. So there, there's also people, especially today, in light of the coronavirus, who are not able to come to church uh, for whatever reason. And so they're watching Mass on TV. Well, during the Mass, they make a spiritual communion. So we can make spiritual communions throughout the day, but people who are attending Mass, physically there, can make a spiritual communion if they can't receive communion. People watching from the television at home. So some people, because they're elderly, are not coming to church, or maybe they have weak immune systems, or, or they're just sick. They're, they may not be able to come for whatever reason. There are some people who perhaps come to church, um, but they may once again be elderly or have weak immune uh, systems. So they may attend Mass, but they might decide, okay, I'm not going to risk going to communion. Now, I think it's pretty safe. If you're worried, what I suggest is a lot of people have those um, handheld sanitizers, just a little squirt bottle, and, you know, just when you're coming up for communion, sanitize your hands just to be sure, because you've touched the pew, you've touched various things. So it's just an added feature. So yes, we should make frequent spiritual communions, whether you are in a state of mortal sin or in a state of grace. Remember, I, you may not remember, but I had posted in one of the videos that even in a state of mortal sin, we should continue with our prayers, our devotions, because we will still receive grace from God. We cannot merit the way that we do when we are in a state of grace. But the graces that we receive will help us and will protect us and will help us to get to heaven. So there are many different spiritual communions. It's good to know one off by heart. The one that I know is through Opus Dei. I think it goes something like this. I wish my Lord and my God to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you with the spirit and fervor of the saints. So you can look that up if you want, but it's, it's a prayer I know off by heart. You can say that prayer throughout the day, even when you make your visits to the Blessed Sacrament. The more often we do it, the more we are expressing our love and desire for our Lord. And in this particular prayer, I want to assume the sentiments of Our Lady, her, her humility, her purity, her devotion with which she received our Lord in Holy Communion when the Apostles gave her. Holy Communion. So if we have that in mind, then it will help us when we have our actual communion and also when we make our spiritual communions. So thank you once again for watching. Please continue to send in your questions and remember to uh, press the like button if you liked uh, this video. If not, you can press dislike. Uh, it's up to you. So thumbs up means, means you like it. All right. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen.